funding as a city, our audits have to be up to date, right? So we've been working to do that. We've been working to uh, restore our streets and our sewers, the things that we hear about all the time. We've been working to uh, clean up the city, which is a continual work in progress. And one of the things that we've done, and I'm, I'm real happy about, that will be implemented January 1st, 2019, is our, is our code enforcement court. And that's important because we have a lot of um, absentee landowners in the city of East St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Probably 90, I would say at least 90% of the property that's owned in East St. Louis and is not being taken care of is owned by people who don't live here. You know, and so we have worked really hard to make sure that all of our, our laws are being lined up and we ascertained a judge now and so come January 2019 we'll be in full swing with our code enforcement court. Um, we've hired on some more code enforcers full time, part time and we're doing that because in order for us to be able to sustain what it is that we're doing as far as cleaning up the city we got to have our code enforcers in place so we've done that. Um, we're doing a lot of work we're working with a company called National Development Council, and we partner with them so that we can create the capacity as a city to develop the city, economically to develop the city. And one of the things that we've been able to do since our new par partnership with them, we've started a new fund called Grow East St. Louis. It's called Grow East St. Louis. The city invested 500 thousand uh, dollars into that fund and use it as leverage to grow that to two million and uh, right now NDC is working to partner with another state entity to take that two million and make it four million those dollars will be used and they will be um, um, they will be turn over they'll turn over they won't go out you know it'll be perpetual um, but those funds will be used to assist our businesses, our mom and pop businesses in the city of East St. Louis. So that, and why is that important? That's important because we want to invest in those who have invested in us for years, for years, you know. So we have businesses, people who haven't been able to get loans because of, maybe because of their personal credit or whatever. So we have come up with a new innovative way to invest in, in our businesses right so that they can be sustained here and we can support again those businesses who have been supporting us in addition to doing that i have an initiative that i started to go along with that called estl proud and what we do is, is we visit two businesses a month and we highlight those businesses so that the citizens can come we want to first of all get them to learn about the business and it is designed so that we as citizens can have relationship, right, uh, with our business owners and, you know, to engage each other. It's about developing an, a sense of community in East St. Louis. Again, we really need that. You know, we're not that, we're, we're large enough, right, but we're still very small, you know, and we have to have um, we've worked very hard to have a sense of community to, to work on restoring the hope again in East St. Louis and also mobilizing and empowering our citizens by way of, you know, encouraging us to work together and support each other. Okay, so. And that's uh, one of the things that this program actually is about there, mm -hmm. is working together and supporting each other. Yeah. And one of the things that I wanted you to make sure that these uh, our parent mentors are aware of is that there are opportunities for you guys to get involved as well 
there are opportunities for you guys to get involved with some of the change that you want to see happen in your community as well. So could you uh, tell them, you know, let them oh, know? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, you are welcome. And one of the things that we're, we're really working on and encouraging is new leaders, new leadership by way of neighborhood organizing, right? Um, what you guys have here is it's a small, intimate group, but it's a working group. And this group right here could be used to affect change wherever you are, right? Um, so we have been working with um, Concerned Citizens of Precinct 12. We've worked with uh, the Resurrection Park Neighborhood Organization. Um, we've worked with a number of the existing neighborhood organizations that are here in the city of East St. Louis, but we're encouraging, we're encouraging more organizations in the various areas, depending on what neighborhood we live in, we're encouraging more of those type organizations to kind of like organically come together so that your interests, you know, every neighborhood has different concerns, different interests, but they all need to be represented. So why am I, as Mary, encouraging that? I'm encouraging that again because it's going to be important for us to continue to create an atmosphere for our young people where they can grow in leadership, right? If we are not, if we're not creating the atmosphere for that type of growth, then what happens to our community, right? You know, we, we get caught, you know, unawares. Our, our youth have not been, the baton hasn't been properly passed because we haven't properly created the atmosphere for them to be able to grow and then step into to leadership position, right? They have a voice, right? We all have a voice and we have to create the atmosphere so that everybody needs and can be heard, right? And so that's important and I'm, again, I'm, I'm very excited about being here. Another thing I wanted to share with you, because of those relationships, we've developed a lot of partnerships. We've partnered with a lot of the entities in the city of East St. Louis, and that's my job. My job as a mayor is to facilitate, is to bring together, is to represent, right? And so we've partnered, we partner with the Housing Authority along with Urban Strategies, and we applied for a very, very competitive grant called Choice Neighborhood. And we were awarded that grant, and it is a, a planning grant. And Choice Neighborhood is about creating a whole neighborhood, not just housing, but it includes um, schools, the park district, it would include non-for-profits that exist in the area. It, it includes the development and work and training of, of our citizens, it includes all of that. So we, uh, the Housing Authority was recently awarded a Choice Neighborhood Planning Grant, and that planning grant is designed specific, specifically for uh, the Gumpers area. For, and those residents in the Gumpers will be involved in the planning of creating a new neighborhood in that area. So um, most of the cities who have been, and it's very competitive, only six cities were awarded this choice neighborhood. So we had to have our, our, our act together. So with that planning, um, it's a two-year process where the citizens will engage um, with the housing authority, with Urban Strategies and McCormick Barron to talk about what they would like to see in the Gumpers area, in the downtown area, how they want to see the housing uh, redone. Because the Gumpers is really old. I think it's the, the oldest housing facility that we have here in the city of East St. Louis. So the objective is to redo those, take the, the 300 unit, turn it into a 900 mixed income uh, unit where others are not, we're not displaced. St. Louis has done it all over. You see a downtown St. Louis where you have uh, low to moderate income, market rate, everybody's living together. You, you don't know. And that's the idea. The idea is to, is to do that. So with the planning grant, I'm, I'm really excited about that. We've, we've been having some meetings 
and doing some tours and talking to the residents and that will continue over a two year process. But while we're planning to redevelop that area, we're also going to be applying for the actual implementation portion, which is where right now we're in the planning stage and then we can step over into the actual implementation if we are awarded the implementation grant. So there are a lot of things that we're doing, you know, uh, to build up the city. And I would tell you that um, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's, it's, um, it just doesn't happen overnight because we didn't get here overnight. We just didn't get here overnight. We are concerned uh, about jobs and the lack thereof in the city of East St. Louis. So we've been working on uh, developing the port, right? Uh, the river, um, the riverfront area. So just a few weeks ago, I was in Denver, Colorado, uh, representing the state of Illinois for this group called the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative. And this, this group uh, consists of mayors whose cities are along the boundaries of the Mississippi River, who their, their cities border the Mississippi River. And I was there just kind of representing the interest as far as, you know, the waterways. You know, we want to keep the waterways clean and, and all of that, even though we have um, manufacturers and formers and suppliers and retailers all interested in our waterways. We want to keep those businesses, you know, to where they make a profit, but we want to keep our waterways clean clean as well because it's our drinking water. So we were there, you know, kind of having having that discussion about how we keep the waterways clean and things of that nature, but still um, support these businesses. Why was I there? It's going to be important. It's important for me as mayor to be proactive about our waterways. When we have access to the waterways, the railways, the highways, and the airways, right? So, you know, um, all of that will play into the direction that we're going as a city. But it takes time, it takes continual working, it takes continual developing of these relationships. Um, I met with a group of, of concerned citizens a few weeks ago, and we were talking about the violence in the city, you know, the shootings and things like that. And one of the things that they, they came up with was, and they felt like, okay, if we can get the lighting, if we can light up the city and get some of these main areas lit up that will help to deter, um, you know, some of the crime. So what we've done, we took that information, we took it to council, and council uh, passed some legislation for us to go ahead and put the lighting out. So yesterday, we had the contractor was up and down Collinsville, up and down some of the main thoroughfares, putting in State Street, getting the lights in the Gumpers area, putting the lights in. So we, you know, we're taking that series. We're, we're, we're gonna light up our city, and we're not done with that. But we're gonna do everything that we can on our end to make sure that we're helping to um, deter crime. Um, it's just a lot of work to be done. It's a lot of work. Uh, <coughs> I know, and I'm pretty sure the rest of them know done a fabulous job. But uh, if not me, but some of my constituents with a fellow parent got a slap in the face uh, a few weeks ago from Monsanto. And I know you're on top of that. Uh, we don't know if lawsuits have been going on. We got something that got as low as $15. Yeah, you know, of course that's ongoing, you know, with uh, the pollution that some of these companies have put into the air. Uh, we just, you know, have to try and continue to support as much as we possibly can our citizens who have been affected by that. You know, and that's why we're closely monitoring some of these companies that are coming in and what they're what they're putting what they're putting out in the air. Absolutely. Anybody have any questions for me? Twenty twenty six. I need something. <laughs> 2020 census is soon approaching as well. Um, we're looking for volunteers, and we're also there are also jobs available 
um, online for people who might be interested in working on the 2020 census. That's going to be important for us as a city because we got to get the head count. We got to get the head count. Um, it affects the funding that we receive as a city. It affects uh, the resources that we receive in cases of emergency. You know, if something happens here, if we got if we got a thousand people, but only 500 are accounted for, then when when situations happen, when emergencies happen, we only we're only funded for the 500. You know, but we need the whole thousand to be counted. So if any of you guys are interested in, you know, getting involved with the census committee, or and getting or even they have part time as well as full time jobs that people are, are can apply for right now uh, and they'll be starting in January 2019 just let me know I do have the information with me what are the qualifications for those jobs you just have to be a citizen that's it that's it, that's it. yeah so any anybody have any questions for me I mean I can go on and on because there's a lot and I, I can just tell you that um, I've learned a lot uh, Relationships are important. Um, it's not easy, you know. It's not easy representing, you know, and being there here. It's not easy, but it's a, it's an awesome privilege. It's still a privilege to serve. Amen. But but you you you, you do right. that you do that with the understanding, knowing that once you get out there, you know, you 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 you're the one. So we have. Let's talk about our government a little bit. So we have a council management form of government, which means um, we have four other council persons. I'm, I'm the mayor, and then we have four other people that represent the city as council. Uh, each one of them um, chair a committee, right? I don't chair a committee. Um, I just facilitate. Um, and each one of us are one-fifth of the council. We all get one vote. And with the council management form of government, the majority it is a, it is a good form of government. Um, so, you know, it's designed to have checks and balances. So um, that's the type of government we have. We have a council management form of government. Okay. So that means that decisions are made by the council through legislation. Okay. Oh, you you spend most of your time now. Uh, I heard. Uh, yeah, you quit your job and devote more time to the city. You had a good paying job, but I know that. I used to go down there at SEC. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I worked with the state of Illinois for 14 and a half years. Um, I quit my job um, in July uh, 31st of this year. Um, but I, it's not something that I just did haphazard. You know, my husband and I, we prayed about this for two to three years because I made really good money working with the state. Right. Um, so this decision, and it's not something that I came out and just publicly announced. Right. I didn't. I didn't do that. Right. Right. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't come out and publicly announce it. I just prayed about it, and I just I made a move. I made. And for me, it was a faith move because I understood and realized that the city really. Um, I, I, mean, I was working hard, you know, as mayor while I was working with my state job, but there was a, a yearning in the, uh, inside of me that just really wanted to be there throughout the day so that I can respond in the way that I wanted to. So I made a faith move, quit that job that pays way more than I make as mayor. I quit the job and so that I could devote myself full time. Um, as mayor. But I didn't come out publicly and announce it, but you know, because I feel like timing is everything. There were, uh, once people found out I left my job, there were all kind of rumors. Oh, she got, she got fired. Oh, they walked her out. Oh, she, you know, they put, it. none of that happened. When I left my job, I left on very good standards. Uh, my supervisor uh, wanted me to stay. So I left on very, very good times. Very good times. Well, definitely in a city that likes to thrive on just negativity, the fact that you're down to earth enough to even address that is very, very appreciate, appreciated. You're talking to a group of women 
who are mothers who are trying to find their way, and you're standing in front of us as the second woman to facilitate a whole municipality. And that is wonderful to take it from a step here to what the possibilities are, you know, and to focus on change. And just to come out and say that they're important as well. Absolutely. That means a lot to us as a group of women and men and as citizens of East St. Louis. That means a lot to know that we have a leader who is attentive, who is forward thinking. Because I don't know if you guys know or not, but Juneteenth when we focus on what it means to be free, this was the first mayor who gave an ear to the fact that we need to wake up and prov provide a way for us to educate and engage ourselves in being part of the solution. Mm -hmm. So after Mary Mika Jackson Hicks took that step, do you know every other municipality each year has been gaining in this effort? Because St. Louis, East St. Louis, Illinois as a whole is a trailblazer. East St. Louis goes hard and we got a mayor who goes hard, hard. <laughs> and we thank you for that. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's what we wanted you all to see. You know, she's a mother, she's a woman, very smart, decision maker. A lot of times the things that happen in our community on a city level Sometimes it doesn't reach every nook and cranny and every house, so putting things out on tape, you know, starting communications with you all, putting things in the newspaper, check all of these places because our mayor is trying to communicate. And her coming today in a very busy schedule shows she wants to talk to you and she wants to hear from you. Oh, absolutely. I thrive off of the citizens. What, is this, what it is that they want. I work very hard on behalf of the citizens, and I don't, I don't, I don't run away from uh, problems or concerns, or, or, or I, and I don't run away from people who may be disgruntled. You know, because if if, if I can offer uh, any help by way of educating, by way of sharing what it is that I know to be the truth. You know, and, and one of the reasons why it's so important for parents to be engaged because you, every, every parent needs to know and every person, every adult needs to know in this city why, you know, uh, we are where we are. And, and the information needs to be gained one-on-one. -on -one. You can't always listen to what people say. Most times they say, you That's really right. need to know for yourself. You can't afford to let people just lead you by the nose and then they come and tell you what they want you to know, but they're not going to tell you what you, you know, the truth or the facts. And the facts are important for everybody to know. That's why I encourage our citizens, come out to the committee meetings, come out to the council meetings. If you can't make that, come out to the town hall meetings that I host. You know, because I answer every question that's asked, and you know the information is out there. And if I don't know the answer, then I'm willing to make sure that that you get, you know, the answer. But it's it's going to be important for us to encourage each other to really stay educated about what's going on. So you because there's a lot of people yes. out here, you know, telling our story and painting the picture that's convenient. But it, it's, it's, it's not necessarily the truth. So that's what um, I just want to encourage us to, you know, to be involved. Ask questions. Ask me questions. I'm very approachable. Very approachable. You know, so. And so I you got your you invitation to the next council meeting. Okay, Mayor, we just want to say thank you for coming December out. 5th. I appreciate you. And um, everybody, give it a call. Thank you. Thank you very much. The mayor of our city, the wonderful, the awesome mayor of Mika Jackson.
meeting with you this morning because you guys are the leaders of today. How do you know you are leaders of today? All right, all right. So today, I just stop by to encourage you. I just stop by to encourage you to continue to to be good leaders. And so one of the ways that you can be a good leader and invest in help yourself to grow in your leadership is to do well in school, right? To do well in what? So in order for us to do well in school, we have to do one thing first. And what is that?
Hi, this is Terrence Taylor with Community Development Sustainable Solutions. I'm here with our mayor, our famous mayor, our awesome mayor, Mayor Mika Jackson Hicks. And today was a day that she came in to speak with our parents, uh, with our CDSS Parent Mentors Program. Uh, we brought this funding all the way from Chicago here, guys. So it's here in East St. Louis. And uh, we're one of, where well, we are the only one in this actual area to bring this funding from Chicago for the parent mentors and today the mayor we had an opportunity for the mayor to speak with our parents and and actually some of the students here Absolutely. at and that officer elementary school so how did you feel today about being here and first I'll, I'll take it with speaking with the parents uh, you know what anytime I have the opportunity to speak with parents to speak with the citizens it's always a joy for me mm -hmm. because um, it gives me the opportunity to share okay. to share information um, to educate to, to hear to be educated about mm -hmm. um, any concerns or any ideas right. you know and it, it, it's always for me um, exchange is always good so I, I just really enjoy you know the interaction so right. it was it was good <laughs> all right now what about the youth now because the youth they had some very interesting questions for you so yeah our, our young people our children are <laughs> the best right in my opinion uh -huh. you know and they had wonderful questions yeah. about uh, mayor what I do uh, how do I like it? Yeah. I mean, just very, very good questions. And of course, I was excited to answer those yeah. questions, you know, because East St. Louis creates uh, the best. Yes. You know, and so, yes. you know, anytime I have the privilege of, of sowing a seed mm -hmm. in, in our young people, um, of course, it's an honor. And I think you may have sown some seeds because you had uh, one of them asked you how much is is that worth? How much right, is it? Right. How much do you make as mayor? Right. Absolutely. And, and I get that you'd be surprised. I spoke to uh, another group of children, mm -hmm. and that question came up. But they're interested. They're, our children are interested in, in government. They're interested mm -hmm. in um, what the process is. They're mm -hmm. interested in all of these things, and that's why it's so important for us mm -hmm. to create that environment for Absolutely. them to to grow. In in it so that our leaders can emerge. Absolutely. Yeah. And as one of the bosses for this particular program, I do have to, because we're always asking for an evaluation from ourselves. Absolutely. So uh, I would have to ask you for an evaluation of us and our program. So, Well, I'm just going to say, you guys, I, I so appreciate the work um, that Sustainable Solutions is doing in the city of East St. Louis. It's, you, you can tell mm -hmm. that it's a, a labor of love. That's right. You know, and anything that we do here, that needs to be the basis, that needs to be the foundation. I'm so appreciative awesome. of the work that you guys are doing. Awesome. And, and, you know, you guys have a connection with the community. You have a connection with the people that you work with, and you have taken the time out Mm -hmm. to actually develop those relationships. Oh, wow. People can talk all day long. Absolutely. But when but when you're actually doing the work, mm -hmm. it shows. Absolutely. When you've taken the time out to, to develop those relationships with people, mm -hmm. it shows. Right. And I'm I'm grateful. Oh I man, I thank you, man. Yes. I thank you. Yes, We're sir. very appreciative of you. And I thank you for taking your time out today to come to CDSS Parent Mentors Program here at Annette Officer Elementary School yeah. and speaking with the kids for us because that was pretty much impromptu. The student, yeah. I mean, well, the principal <laughs> came to me and was like, hey, uh, do you think she could speak to the third and fourth grade? Yeah, okay, I'll ask her. So, and I'm glad that you were gracious enough to, you know, make yourself available for that time as well. So thank you, Mayor. Uh, and thank you for having me and I'll come anytime. All right. You have a blessed day too, okay? You too. Thank All right, you. together we rise. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Absolutely.